Hey, hey, everyone. Once again, this is Jared Taylor from the Biology 112 teaching team here at UBC. In this video, I would like to quickly introduce you to macromolecules, and this will be followed up by future videos that will discuss the different types of macromolecules individually. So, I know you are all waiting for the what, so here it is. What are macromolecules? Well, the macro part of the name macromolecule suggests something that is large scale, and that is indeed the case for these molecules. Macromolecules are larger molecules that are assembled from small repeating subunits. We generally refer to the subunits as monomers and the larger assembled molecules as polymers. There are four general types of macromolecules in biochemistry and biology, three of which we will focus on here in Bio 112. The four types are known as lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. Let me briefly introduce each one. As macromolecules go, lipids are a bit unusual, for reasons you will see in class. The repeating subunits that make up the individual lipids are not something we worry about in this course, and will be left for more advanced biochemistry courses. In Biology 112, we are more interested in the lipid itself as the repeating unit, and in this case, a phospholipid as shown here. Phospholipids can assemble into a lipid bilayer, which is the lipid-based structure we are interested in here in Biology 112. Lipid bilayers form the base structure of all cell membranes, and we will spend a good chunk of time discussing them in class. Proteins comprise an important class of macromolecules in terms of cell functionality. If a cell needs to do something, like move, change shape, or carry out a chemical reaction, proteins are almost always involved. The subunit monomer of proteins is the amino acid. The simplistic general structure of amino acids, as shown here, belies the incredibly complicated properties of proteins. The properties of the amino acids allow proteins to fold up into extremely complex shapes, and it is these shapes that define the function. This is something we will explore during Biology 112. So, if proteins are the tools, then nucleic acids are the instructions. Nucleic acids are composed of subunits called nucleotides. In terms of the nucleic acid macromolecule, pretty much everyone has heard of the most famous type, DNA. Not quite as famous, but equally important, is RNA. While some nucleic acids can be used as enzymes, i.e. part of the cell's toolbox, we are mostly interested in nucleic acids because of their use in information storage, transfer, and decoding within cells. Finally, we have the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are composed of sugar monomers such as the glucose molecule shown here. Now, the name carbohydrate is a bit misleading because it is often used to describe both the monomer and the macromolecule. The name polysaccharide is sometimes used to better differentiate the macromolecule form. Unlike proteins and nucleic acids, carbohydrates generally have very little variation in the type of monomer used in any one type of the macromolecule. For example, the starch macromolecule shown here comprises only glucose monomers. Carbohydrates are important for both structure and energy storage in cells. This is especially true for plant cells, which is something you will see more of in future botany and plant biochemistry courses. However, Carbohydrates are not extensively covered in Biology 112, and beyond this introduction, you won't encounter them much in this class. And with that, we can wrap up this video. That should be enough of an introduction to give you an idea of what macromolecules are. We will spend a good amount of time in Biology 112 studying three of the four macromolecules, and future videos will introduce each of them in turn.